I'm Dr. Lucinda Bateman. I am a general internal medicine specialist um, that has uh, changed the focus of my practice from primary care to a specialty in the evaluation and management of patients with chronic fatigue and pain. I think that the existing diagnostic criteria that exist for ME-CFS have some weaknesses. Um, so they are not ideal and probably not adequate for the purposes of both research and uh, clinical medicine. We need uh, criteria that are very sensitive. That means help us identify all cases of the condition. And we need criteria that are specific, which means we don't tend to um, falsely diagnose uh, other conditions uh, within the case definition. And I would say that the, uh, there are examples of each of this uh, across the case definitions. So in order to have good diagnostic criteria, we are going to uh, need to di define subsets of uh, this broad illness. Whatever criteria we use for diagnosis must be acceptable to uh, scientific and medical institutions, so they adopt the criteria and use them and uh, bring these illnesses into the fold. They'll need to be reasonably easy and practical for clinicians to apply in the clinic, and um, hopefully we'll have more objective criteria uh, that will make it possible to uh, more clearly identify uh, patients who have the illness. And also these diagnostic criteria will need to identify all stages of illness. And of course, it would be great if we could minimize the need for extensive differential diagnosis, um, rendering this a diagnosis of exclusion. We need to have as many positive criteria as possible in our diagnostic criteria. The existing criteria commonly used uh, would be the ME criteria, the Canadian consensus criteria, and the FACUDA CFS criteria. And each one of those criteria has strengths and weaknesses. The FACUDA criteria were actually intended only as research criteria, so they are really not appropriate, and they're way too broad to use uh, in a clinical setting. The uh, Canadian criteria and the um, international consensus criteria are probably a much more accurate description of the illness clinically. The problem is that, in, in my opinion, as a clinician, is that they're, they're too complicated. And um, they are mostly subjective. And they're not really easy for a clinician to pull out of their brain in, in the clinical setting. You have to pull it out and read all of those criteria on a piece of paper. So we need criteria that will be core and as specific to the illness as possible, and our positive findings related to the illness. So I think we can do better than what we have, and we should. As science moves forward, we should uh, develop uh, criteria for subsets and begin to tease apart uh, the, the different presentations and stages of illness with our diagnostic criteria. We actually have fairly good diagnostic tools currently, even without strong objective markers. We just uh, have kind of uh, become a little bit lazy in the clinic, I think. Um, I can usually tell from a careful history most of what's going on with my patient. And that might include gathering subjective information like a pain diagram. But uh, uh, when you discuss the nature of the onset, the character of post-exertional malaise, and other uh, specific features of MECFS, the subjective history is very valuable. It is just time consuming. So we may need to develop tools to gather that information more quickly and efficiently and, and in, a, in a way that's uh, consistent from case to case and from doctor to doctor. Uh, physical exam, although we think of it as not being, not having findings, actually there are a lot of findings on physical exam. Um, the orthostatic intolerance and autonomics uh, dysfunction can really be identified with vital signs, pulses, standing, and supine blood pressure and pulse. You can look at the 
color of the skin and the temperature of the skin and the extremities. So you, you can see the fatigue and you can also, uh, you, it may not be uh, numerically measurable, but during the course of an exam, a careful clinician can detect the cognitive dysfunction and the, and the cognitive fatigue that happens during the course of an interview. So if we teach clinicians uh, how to observe for these things, we should do better. Also, there are usually subtle neurologic signs like myoclonus or poor balance, tremor, and sensory changes on exam that can be uh, gleaned from the exam. Most of the laboratory evaluations we have uh, are indirect and used to exclude other illnesses, but I think we'll see that there are some soft signs, uh, maybe statistically, that we may be able to uh, learn more about later in terms of laboratory tests. And I think one of the better uh, diagnostic tests available, not to everyone, but available in some situations is cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And uh, many patients will have abnormal parameters on cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And then at least two papers have been published showing that sequential tests of cardiopulmonary exercise testing show a decrement in function on day two. And uh, that may become uh, an objective marker that we can use for diagnosis. Heeft u een vraag naar aanleiding van deze video? Reageer op YouTube. Tweet naar het MECVS Vereniging. Of mail naar wvp.me-cvsvereniging.nl. Uw vragen worden zoveel mogelijk behandeld in de chatsessies.